G'day guys, just gonna do a quick video on how to build some drawers in a typical camper trailer setup. So the top's been lifted up. You get your kitchen, which is at the rear here. And then you got all that space in between. So first things first, open her up. Lock it on. Once it's locked into position, you can work out exactly where it stops. So I've actually drawn some lines. So I've got this line here, which is where the kitchen is when it's open. And I've got this line back here. It goes down and across. That one is where it's closed. So when it's in the closed position, the drawer is gonna be all the way back there. So, because if you can see here, if you're not familiar with these setups, when it's shut, it goes all the way in here. So you can see those lines there. So that actually takes up all this space that you can't use, so that's fine. That's why we've got to utilise it as best we can. Okay, so that's locked on. You've marked it all out. Now the first thing you're going to do is work out your depth. I've got here the rubber. It's 15 mil. Well, it's approximately 12 mil to the top of this. So I'm going to make my... I've got to raise this by 15 mil so that when my drawer goes on it, it can slide past here. So I've... Uh, Utilise some fairing channel, which I'll show you in a sec. So this is where my drawer will go. And that's my fairing channel. So the drawer itself will run just on top of these little ribs here, which are really smooth. I know it looks corrugated in the center, but it'll just be run, rubbing on these little parts here. So you could just do two, one on either side. I've got three just for a bit of added extra, um, try and get a bit more sm of a smoother run. But you could use timber, ply, um, plastic, metals. There's, there's basically endless. Um, it all depends on the smoothness, like the minimum amount of friction from the underside of your drawer to those runners there. So next up we'll be cutting the timber. Using here it's actually called uh, form ply. It's got this special coating on it. It's made for uh, holding uh, supporting concrete decks when they pour apartment buildings and things like that. It's uh, it won't rot out. It's just your standard ply. It's 18 mil thick, um, but it's got this special coating on it, which make going to make it a bit smoother to run. So I had this available to me, so that's why I'm using it. As you can see, it's been used for concrete before, um, but you could use any any ply um, as long as it's got the, the thickness to hold the weight that you need it to. So this being 18 mil thick, it's gonna be uh, more than more than enough for me. You could probably get away with using 15 mil, 12 mil would be on the lighter side. So I'd recommend going sticking with 18 mil ply. So to perform the cuts on the drawers, I'm gonna use what's called a track saw. It's gonna give you a precision cut. But you could use a power saw or a panel saw if you don't have anything else. Um, yeah, but I just want to get a nice neat cut, so that's why I'm going to use this baby. So just to take off these sharp edges, I'm going to run the planer. You could use a hand planer, but I've got a battery one. So just do, going to do a very light skim off the bottom so that the bottom edges are not going to be sharp. Okay, so I messed up before. I didn't realise that there was some clearance underneath the kitchen. So you can see the kitchen doesn't actually go anywhere near where my little furring channel runners are. So that means that I can actually run these channels all the way to the edge. So when the drawer is all the way pulled out, it's actually got something supporting the back of it. It's going to make it a lot easier. Okay, so I've finished cutting my sides. That's one, that's two, and that's the bottom there. 
Now, I routed, I um, planed the edges of the sides as well. I'll show you when it's all built as to why I did that. And I've given them a light sand. Now, I'm about to do some rips in these sides so that they can carry dividers. Okay, so what I've done is I've clamped the boards, the sides of the drawer down to my table. And I've just marked it every 200 mil. You can mark it at whatever you want. I just added a few extra to what I thought I would need later. And that way you can move your dividers however you feel like it. So now I'll use the track saw again, but you could always use a just a normal power saw or battery saw, but you'd want to um, clamp down a guide when you're doing these cuts, because these have got to be very precise. So I've done a little test cut on a piece of scrap and I had to measure the width of the blade, which is three millimeters which is gonna be perfect for my six mil ply that I'm gonna use in my divider. And I also wanted to check the depth. So that depth there is approximately five mil, which is probably enough. If you go much deeper than that, you're gonna bite into too much of the ply. It's gonna impair the structural integrity of the ply. So you don't wanna do that. Okay, so now that the sides have been ripped, what, I did, what I've done is I've put the bottom of my drawer and clamped it to my sides. So now I'm gonna continue this line all the way through on the bottom as well, so that those dividers are in the bottom and on the sides. So the most important thing is that the sides line up with the bottom. Because when we because when we fix it all together, you'd want those lines to line up perfectly. That's why it's a lot easier with a track saw if you've got one. Uh, also you'll notice I've got a slight offset here. It's because my face board and my backboard are gonna be screwed into the sides, which I'll show you in a minute. So now I've got <clears throat> my sides. One, two, got my front and my back, and I've got the bottom. So all we have to do now is screw it together. So the sides are on, put a screw approximately every 300 mil, which should hold it all together. And now for the front and back. All right, now the box is constructed. Put a lot more screws in the front. Did, a bit, did myself a mischief in the process. So a lot more screws in the front because that's where you're going to be pulling and pushing. As you can see, all these dividers, they all line up. Back's got a few less screws in it because it's not going to be having any force put on it. So now for the moment of truth, see if it fits. Okay, so that fits nice and snug. Goes in the runner, it's all good. Uh, it's catching on a bolt at the rear there. See it back there. Uh, also, I've got to adjust 
the sides here so that it won't hide behind that there. See that? So I'll have to put, attach something to the side here so that it's able, actually able to slide properly. But looks good so far. All right, so now for the dividers. Yeah, I'm using this composite board. It's like particle board. You can see all the little, see the little particles all just glued together. It's pretty flimsy sort of stuff. But what do you expect for six mil thick? It's also very cheap. So I'll start ripping up these and then we'll throw them in and see if they fit. All right, so here's the dividers. I've got another three. I probably won't use them all at once, but we can just store them at the back right over there if we're not going to use them, but they're just handy to have and be able to swap over. I had to uh, buzz the edges a little bit with a planer just because the hole is exactly six mil. See that? I've tapered the edges very slightly. Makes it a little bit easier to get these in. But yeah, they're working really, really well. So it's coming along. So there you go. That's the next stage done. All the dividers. All that extra cutting's worth it. You can take out whatever you want, whenever you want it. Make the, make the spaces a bit bigger. Now we'll have to, yeah, just adjust the sides, put a handle on the front, and I'll end up putting some dividers at the back here as well. So that when the kitchen's closed, there's gonna be a few dividers and that'll make a wall that will the, the drawer will slide along. And then I can put the uh, annex and things like that in that area. Okay, so because there's a slight gap on the side of the trailer just here, the drawer will hit on the back of it. So, <coughs> first of all, there's a bolt there, a bolt there. It will connect and hit there. So I actually need to put something on the side so that it's off the wall slightly. So if you look there, it's about 15, 17 mil. Hi, Dad. Hi, Xavier. So I'm gonna make it 20 mil. So I'm gonna put a piece of ply running along here and I'm gonna screw it from the outside here. So screw on the outside, come right through the ply and then I'll cut the screws off on the inside so that it can run smoothly along that. All right, so I've screwed through the outside of this trailer. You can see the screw there. I used roofing screws so that they don't leak. So they got a little rubber grommet on them. The screws came right through, so I just ground them off with a grinder. You can see there. So now it's got something to run against. And I've just fixed down my battens on the bottom of the trailer. So I've got some, something smooth to run against now. So I'll put the drawer back in and we'll start building the dividers on this corner. Okay, so now I've got my shelf into position, the drawer into position, sorry. There's the drawer, that's where it's gonna go. I've marked a line here. That's, that's five mil off of where the drawer is so that we don't hit it. Now I've got the mark where the kitchen goes, which is this one here. So I'm gonna keep myself about 20 mil off of that, which is the same as this drawer. So, now I'm going to build this back edge, which I'm going to run along here. And then I'll build the sides, which hold it in. The divider there, which is about to have some mid walls coming off of it. And what I've done is I've grabbed the annex walls and put it in there. So I know exactly how big it's going to be. So I can, you know, give it a bit of space and put my divider right there. All right, so I've cut those four now. So I've got four dividers, which you'll see in a second once they're installed. I've done a little check out here and that's gonna hold the poles. So you'll see why that's important in a minute. Right, it's not been screwed off yet. So these are still loose, but you can see here, it fits all the annex and all my tarps in this uh, front left section. And I've got about two thirds left over here. So the reason for that check out was a couple of the poles are a bit long. So now, they just rest in there like that. So, slide them over a little bit. They'll butt up to that end. They don't obstruct the gas strut. 
and there's still plenty of room in here. So I've got two more, three more sections in here. So I made these ones a little bit smaller. This one a bit bigger so I can put um, some cutlery and things like that in and uh, inside of a container. And then in there, it could be like loose condiments and things like that. So it's all starting to get there. Now I've just got to work out how I want to attach this to the trailer. So I've just had a scrounge around and I've managed to find myself some rivets. So what I'll do is I'm just going to rivet through the outside face of the trailer in and I'm going to attach it to this little aluminium bracket but you could use steel or anything you could also just put roofing screws like I did on the other side but I just figured a roofing screw through the center of this ply will probably won't bind as well as something like this will give it a bit more strength so what I'm doing here is I'm drilling through the inside out so I'm drilling through the bracket then drilling outwards so that I can line it up properly. And then I'm just using a hex head screw to fix the ply onto the side. It's quite rigid. Um, these these um, rivets are quite large, so that's why there's a little bit of scuffing down here. That's, from, that's actually from the rivet gun, not from my drill. So I'll just take my time and go through and drill all these off. It's a bit hard to film whilst I'm doing it, so apologies for that. All right, so there you have it. I put the uh, bracket on the larger side, sorry, the bracket from the larger box, I put on the smaller side so that when I put all the tarps and annex and everything in here, there's less chance of uh, scratching on anything. So I put it in this side and that's uh, pretty much it. We're just gonna test it out now and see if it all works. Uh, just a little additional extra. Um, I riveted through the front. You can just see them there, up there. I put three clips behind this area here, and then I just uh, screwed some ply in front of it, which attaches to the back. So the reason why I did that is this was loose. So you can see it's just spanning quite a distance at 700 mil, and that was a little bit loose. So yeah, I put three brackets onto that, and the brackets had some, you know, they look, they're a little bit sharp. So on the edges and the top of the screws where the rivets are. So I didn't want to rip my canvas because when I cram it in there, I'll show you. you drop it in. You don't want to have to be gentle. You want to be able to push it down. And if you do that and you've got sharp edges in this corner, it's just going to wreck it. So I just added that in. So for the finishing touches on the drawer, I'm just going to add a handle that I picked up from Bunnings. It was about $10. It's going to go in the middle there and I'm also going to put some carpet on it. I'll spray this black as well so it's a bit easier on the eyes. So we'll do that now. Let that dry for a little bit, give it a second coat, and then should be good enough to put on. So also to finish off the front here, the face, first of all, before I put my handle on, which is still up here drying, I'm gonna put some carpet on it. So I've got this carpet, 17 bucks a lineal meter, which is plenty enough. I've got to use it for some other drawers and things. So just gonna mark out on this, the size of the drawer, add another 40 mil so I can wrap it around the edges and just gonna dress it up that little bit more. All right, so I've given this quick sand because it's quite a shiny surface. I want to make sure that the glue adheres to it. I've overcut the carpet so it runs past the edge. We can cut that off after. Rather it be a bit too big than a bit short. And I've got some polyurethane. You could probably use silicon, but you're supposed to use that tactile special carpet stick stuff, but I don't have any. So I'm just using polyurethane. Works for everything else, so it'll work for this. I'm just going to run, do a couple of runs around here, a couple of dobs of glue, stick it on, um, flatten it out as much as I can, and I'm going to use a little stapler just to staple in the edges. And yeah, that should work.
So with the handle now installed and the carpet, it's just being glued on. Got the bolts running through the handle. I figured that screws with the amount of force that I'm gonna put on it, pulling it back, it's uh, may have pulled it off. So I'll just use bolts so you can see the little nuts on the inside. But yeah, that's it. This is uh, quite strong. I can um, stand on top of it on my 100 kilos. So um, yeah, might have been a long-winded uh, video. But I just wanted to show all the little parts and the process, like you know the dividers and things like that. It's all these little things that you don't think of uh, during the build, and you'll get annoyed about it afterwards because you'll have to strip it apart, or you'll just never get around to doing it. Uh, I like doing things once and doing it properly, so that's why this is my process. Um, also, in regards to the tools, uh, materials, things like that, um, I didn't purchase many uh, items for this. I bought the handle. Um, and I paid for the carpet. Other than that, everything was just leftover building materials. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm a builder, so it's a lot easier for me to do that. But you could use a range of different materials. Um, I'm not sure about the costings on it all from, you know, varies from country to country, things like that. But in Australia, for all the materials here, you'd be looking at under 200 bucks. Um, that includes the other dividing section on the other side, high quality materials, and you know a decent finish the color is almost exactly the same match as uh, the rest of my trailer which worked out really well i'm happy with that um but yeah you, you don't have to use the the best tools uh i just use whatever tools uh i've got for the job so being a builder i've got every every tool you can think of when it comes to building a house or things like this so i like to use the right tool for the right job gets the job done quicker for me um but you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You could do it on the cheap. You could probably build this whole thing with a panel saw and a drill um, if you really wanted to. But yeah, I like getting all my bits and bobs out just to make it a bit more efficient so I can spend more time with my family and more time camping. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys. <laughs>